Crusaders and welcome to the latest episode as today I'm going to be reviewing the fourth installment of the Jackass movie franchise, Jackass Forever. Uh, now for anyone who keeps up with the channel, uh, we did a episode that came out uh, earlier today where Brian Michaels and myself went over the first three films of the Jackass franchise called a Jackass Franchise Retrospective. Um, and in that we talked about how much we enjoyed the Jackass films. Uh, you know, there were things we, we loved and things that didn't really work that we didn't like. And we kind of went over all the characters of, of the cast. Uh, one thing that we were really worried about coming, coming into Jackass Forever, it was mainly the age of everybody in this movie. Because they're all between like 45 and, fi and, and, and their 50s. Um, and we were wondering if they were going to be bringing in a, a new class, a, a new group of uh, guys and, and girls, uh, uh, respectively, to basically be able to do some of the stuff that they probably shouldn't be doing anymore. And, and, and the clear-cut answer is yes, they did. They brought in six new people. Um, and I was worried, because knowing that this new class of uh, people coming in was, I mean, looking at them first glance, you don't really think much of them. And the main thing that you were worried about is, are these guys, and, and effectively one girl, going to mesh well with the old cast? Are they going to have fan favorite moments that will make us kind of welcome them into the, the Jackass crew? And uh, luckily for me, the answer is yes. Now, my theater messed up. And uh, there's for anyone who's going to it, you know, there's supposed to be like Jackass Forever with bonus material. And that bonus material is basically like a five to seven minute interview with the cast, including the new the new cast, uh, kind of introducing you to them and kind of, you know, getting their thoughts on shooting the film. Problem is, is during the shoot, it's going over skits that are already in the movie. And my theater, instead of putting it at the end of the film, like the film says they were going to do, they put it right in the beginning. So there were some skits that were spoiled before the movie even started that I really wish I didn't know about before the movie started. Uh, but but this this little five to seven minute thing, now granted it should have been at the end of the film and you've had at this point an hour and a half to kind of get to get used to these people. Um, but mostly this new cast really works. They're, they're a lot of fun. Um, you've got uh, Jasper Dolphin and his father Dark Shark. Um, Jasper, uh, he, he's, he probably gets the, him and Rachel Wolfson, who's a stand-up comedian who joins the cast, they probably get the least, uh, amount to do in the movie, along with Eric Makana, or M Maknaka, I probably said that wrong, um, but when they do do stuff, especially Jasper, uh, he's, he's pretty, he's pretty funny, he's, he's quite a, he's quite a blast, um, the two big standouts for me, uh, to, of the new cast, is uh, Sean Poopies <laughs> Mc McNerney and uh, Zach Holmes. Zach Holmes effectively is basically the new Preston. Um, and, and sometimes when he does some skits with Preston, it actually works really well. And Poopies is definitely kind of taking over, I would say, the ba the Bam, Margera, uh, a part of the role where he gets pranked a lot in the movie. Um, now, a lot of people who've been keeping up with the Jackass forever... Um, Bam had some some backstage issues with, uh, you know, Knoxville and uh, James Tr er, Tremaine, who does you know the directing of the films, and he was effectively basically fired and removed from the movies. He is in one skit in this film, but it's a blink and you'll miss him. Um, it's it's one skit in the middle of the movie. If you are not actively looking for Bam, you will not see him. But he is in one uh, part in it. But the camera does a pretty much a pretty good job of basically not putting the camera on Bam at all. So if you're not looking for him, you're not going to see him in the movie, but he is in one skit. Uh, but the main thing coming into this movie is, is it still funny? Is it still this crazy uh, laugh-out-loud antic skits that sometimes will gross you out and make you want to puke? But mostly, is it one of those movies that, just like the previous three, are making you jump up and holler and just laugh as a community inside this theater? And Jackass Forever 100% does that. Um, to me, this is the best of the Jackass franchise. And, and Brian and I kind of you know touched on this during the fran franchise retrospective, is we prefer the Jackass skits when it is, you know, basically these, these pranks on everybody and not trying to do skits where they're bringing in, um, you know, innocent bystanders and trying to pull pranks on them and trying to do these these elongated skits, you know, to try to make it go shock value. 
Uh, and that's and that's one of the things they they, they mention in in the movie or could have been in the the bonus material is that they can't really do that anymore. A because of COVID and B because they're all kind of huge stars now in terms of jackass that they can't really get away with doing these these skits in on the street or in stores and stuff because they get pointed out. So most of the skits are them kind of doing random stuff in areas secluded to them. Just like a bunch of you know you know friends just fucking around and and doing stuff to each other and to me that is what Jackass should be and that's what what makes Jackass work and Brian I haven't talked to I haven't talked to him since he saw the movie but that is what we loved about the first three films were those particular skits and that's what this movie is I think there's maybe one maybe two skits where they actually are doing something in front of uh you know people who are not a part of the film crew uh and and those work effectively um but just you know they they kept it tight within these two um skits everything else is them just pranking each other or them doing um skits that are concluded to them like whether they're in a warehouse or you know a studio area kind of thing um and most of them work phenomenally i was actually in a I would say a, a smaller theater, but it was about 50, 50 to 75 percent full, and it was awesome just being able to laugh out loud with everyone in the theater and enjoying the jackassness of it all. Yes, um, now that it's 2022, they definitely do not shy away from uh, the penis of it all. Um, you're going to get a lot of penis in this movie, so if you have a problem seeing that, you're really not going to enjoy Jackass Forever. Um, they... Uh, they definitely do not block, you know, like uh, black box them out like they used to do in the in the old, in the like the first couple films, um, which they really barely did it in Jackass 3D. Uh, so there is a lot of penis jokes, um, but the jokes themselves are hilarious. There's there are definitely some that made me squeamish uh, because they brought in you know certain animals or there was just some dis- you know. But the one thing is that I would say is a lot of the disgustingness. Um, like some people weren't really fans of like, uh, uh, I think it was Jackass 3D that did like the, the uh, sweatsuit or something like that. There are still some of that in this film, but not nearly as much. A lot of these, just a lot of just more physical pranks, physical, uh, humor, and then stuff with, um, you know, animals. Uh, and, and it works so well. I would say the, probably the, uh, the MVP of everybody in the film definitely has to go to Danger Aaron. Uh, Danger Aaron probably has to go through the most pain in this movie, uh, and he definitely takes kind of more the most punishment out of everyone in this film. Everyone, everyone outside of Chris Pontius um, gets kind of their spotlight in this. Uh, it has has a painful, hurtful moment. Uh, Pontius, uh, he's basically the dick jokes, but he doesn't really do any of the skits. I think outside of one, uh, which is the one that Bam is in. Um, so he's just kind of there hanging out, just kind of being Chris, but he doesn't really do any of the real big skits outside of one. Um, Knoxville definitely has his spotlight to shine, as well as Steve-O, Wee Man, Preston, um, Dave England. He, he gets, he gets his, uh, I'd say him and Danger Aaron are definitely the two that probably take the brunt of most of the stuff, but Danger Aaron definitely was the MVP with uh, Chris uh, Pontius being probably the least valuable player of the Jackass crew. Um, in terms of the newbies, uh, Zach Holmes and, like I said, Poopies, uh, Sean Poopies McNerney, uh, were definitely the two standouts uh, in doing a lot of the pranks. Um, hands down, probably my favorite prank, uh, which, like I said, sadly, because of the bonus material giving it away in, before the film started, uh, was definitely Silence of the Lambs. Um, that one was hands down the funniest, and that was the one where the audience in the theater were bowling all over laughing i was in tears i felt like i was going to throw up not because of the disgustingness of it it was because i couldn't catch my breath and i was dying laughing the whole time um there's so many great uh there's a there's one with danger aaron um uh with uh with a cup um and it is brutal but hilarious uh, as well uh jack has forever is is a welcome fresh air to to the jackass franchise um, it's been 10 years since Jackass 3D. We never thought we were going to get Jackass back. Uh, and it was a welcome surprise seeing Jackass Forever come back together and watching everyone come back together and put on a great 
just 90 minutes of pure hilarity and laughter. Very, very painful laughter, but laughter nonetheless. To me, this was my favorite of, of the Jackass films. Um, they also do, do a very nice thing at the end with Ryan Dunn. Uh, I kind of thought they were going to do a little more with it, but you know, what they did was, was nice, um, and a nice tip of the hat to Ryan Dunn, who passed away uh, a few years back. Um, but, yeah, uh, if you're a fan of Jackass and you're a little hesitant on whether or not you should check this out, I strongly, strongly urge you, go see Jackass Forever. See it in theaters. Hopefully you got a big theater with you uh, because having as many people in the theater at, at once definitely ups the ante, it ups the laugh factor uh, than you you know waiting for this to come out on digital and watching it by yourself. Um, you will not be disappointed. I'm not going to give really a score for this because it's not – like it's, it's a skit – you know, movie. It's just showing skits throughout. It's not like a story or a plot or acting or anything like that. Um, I would say Jackass, I gave four stars. I'm going to give Jackass Forever basically four and a half stars, which is like an 85%. But that's definitely not like, I'm not going to put that up against like, you know, movies of the year who are actual, you know, movies. But Jackass Forever is a ton of fun. I was in tears laughing so hard watching this movie. Uh, and I strongly encourage you, if you like these kinds of films or if you like the jackass crew go out of your way to check this out this weekend you will not be disappointed i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this review if you guys did go and hit that like share and subscribe button to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos pop up on the movie crusaders and of course you're going to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below um coming up or out right now on the channel like i said uh brian and michael and myself are talking about the other three jackass films in a jackass franchise retrospective uh, tomorrow we have our first episode of the Movie Crusaders Chat About, where we basically, it's our topic show where we, Brian, Michael, and myself just talk about random stuff. Uh, the topic of that episode is why we love movies, why we are, why we do this, why we love talking about films with you guys and, and doing all this stuff. And that episode is strictly just you guys getting to know myself and Brian better, uh, kind of getting in the inner thoughts of, of why we love what we love about movies. Uh, so that comes out tomorrow. Uh, next week we got our big Valentine's Day episode um, and they lived happily ever after question mark where we go over over 50 rom-com couples and we ask the big question or debate the big question do we think these couples are still together or do we think they broke up um, you know in the following weeks we will have our actor actress director showcase where we will talk about Paul Rudd Natalie Portman and Tony Scott and then we'll have our big franchise flashback at the end of the month where we will go over the Batman movie verse before the Batman comes out on March 4th uh, in terms of movie reviews, uh, Home Team for, on Netflix, we got a review out for that, as well as HBO Max's The Fallout. Um, Moonfall also came out this weekend. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get to watch that, uh, but if I do, there will be a review on the channel for it. Uh, next week, you've got I Want You Back on, I believe, Amazon Prime. Uh, also, Marry Me is in theaters. I don't know if I'll be able to check that out. Um, and then, of course, on the 18th, we've got Uncharted. So we got a lot of stuff coming out here in the next month. We hope you guys stay tuned and check all that out. Uh, and until next time, in case I don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Movie Crusaders. You're still here. It's over. Go home.